4th of July weekend, Friday. Number one form, number one show, number one ticket for Bama. Football news, in my own words, George Truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine coming to you from the Magic City of Birmingham, streaming to you the show on YouTube. Speaking of the channel, go ahead, drop a thumbs up, do that right now. Uh, hit the like, drop a thumbs up, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, also turn on all of those notifications, hit that bell, so that way you can get all the news, notes, alerts, and coverage on your favorite program, that being the Crimson Tide. We also got you covered on Facebook and Twitter as well. All forms of social media streaming to you, the show. Folks, we got a can of crazy, a can of crazy to pop into, to use a baseball term. On Thursday, it was opening day yesterday for the NCAA allowing all collegiate athletes, student athletes to be able to capitalize off their likeness, people jumping around like House of Pain. Uh, so much excitement, so much intensity happening. Uh, you, you got Bama fans dumping tea down the drain like it's the Boston Harbor. However, Malachi Moore was able to rectify that. Malachi Moore was able to clean that up. And then, of course, two years ago, Dabo Sweeney of Clemson, he sat there and said, well, if we professionalize college athletics, then I might as well just quit and turn pro. And now two years later, uh, Dabo Sweeney's getting hit hard in the comments. He has not responded. He has not answered. But Dabo is getting hit very, very, very huge here in the comment section. But we got a lot to get to. We got a lot to talk about here on this evening. Got to shout out my man, John Ivory, one time in the production studio doing his thing. We want you guys being a part of tonight's show. And you can do this by calling 205-448-1358. Yes, that number right there. 205-448-1358. Get that little ring of ding ding and you can have your voice be heard, your opinion be made known right here on the show. As always, that daily Super Chat Go, $75 daily Super Chat Go. We're going to have two awesome guests, two former players, but talk about name, image, likeness, giving their thoughts, their expertise. Does this hurt Alabama? Does this help Alabama? How will Coach Saban be able to have this benefit the program as well as not letting it be a distraction? So it's going to be awesome to be joined by Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman, and Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver later on in the show and then we got the locker drop game to kind of tidy up loose ends and wrap this up so don't want to miss today's show but we kick in here with the first topic of conversation like i mentioned on thursday yesterday i mean it, it was crazy college football history the ncaa Finally taking the foot off the necks of these collegiate athletes they have been they were granted the opportunity to capitalize off their name image likeness it was oh happy day people jumping around hopping around bouncing around it was finally about time we get a chance to get some compensation we get a chance to uh, uh to profit off our likeness we get a chance to capitalize off this deal i mean it, it was really really uh, an exciting day on yesterday, and, and you're already starting to see uh, Alabama players take advantage of this. When you look at the likes of Trayshawn Holden, Alabama wide receiver, who was the first to actually go with uh, the name that go with profit off of his likeness, Trayshawn Holden hooked up with the uh, Yoki Gaming Company as well as the College Football Edits Company. So you had Trayshawn Holden first, then you had Evan Neal hook up with the Yoki Gaming Company, Christopher Allen hook up with the Yoki Gaming Company, Javion Cohan, DeMarco Hellams hooking up with the Yoki Gaming Company, and then uh, you had uh, Aja Hall, Aja Hall, who had just the massive A-Day performance, the five-star wide receiver from Florida, came in the 2021 class, this recent class right here, 6'3", 195 pounds, the four catches for 72 yards, receiving output from him. 
he has gotten partnerships with the Playmaker Company and College Football Edits. You got Malachi Moore once again. He made things right for, for Milo's. You know, Milo's brought over uh, Bo Nix from Auburn, and they said, hold on, we can't let Auburn be the only person. We got to get Malachi Moore in here from Alabama to make things right because we can't have our tea dumped down the drain. So Malachi Moore has to deal with Milo's tea. And Milo's Lemonade. And of course, Bryce Young, who has signed with the CAA football agency that will help him with his NIL marketing strategy. So we already kind of have and see some Alabama players get fully involved in this. And it's a good thing. But, you know, along with that, what's, what's been very intriguing for me to see is the healthy conversation that's going on with the Alabama football program, the players, in terms of name, image, likeness. And while Thursday was a day where people were happy, people were excited, they were jumping around, they were very enthused by this. You even had, you know, some Alabama players that went, whoa, 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 guys, hold on, hold on, hold on here. NIL is good. Name, image, likeness is good. This is, this is exciting. It's fun. I'm happy that we're finally getting compensated. I'm happy that we're finally able to uh, capitalize on our likeness. But at the same time, don't let this be a distraction from the main thing. Don't let this become a distraction from what we're really trying to do. And you look at young players like Monkel Goodwine, you know, four-star defensive lineman, came into this signing class here, 6'4", about 280 pounds from the Maryland area. He sat there and put on his Instagram, I'm not even focused on the, on the NIL right now. I'm focused on perfecting my craft and becoming the best player on the field but I can be. And then you had Des Moines Kennedy, second year linebacker from Mobile, kind of saying the same thing. Don't let the NIL distract you from the big bag, the important bag, the major bag, that being the NFL money, the generational wealth that these players are going to be able to get to if they continue to perform well out there on the field. You had, you know, another five star a player from this 2021 class, a Terry on Arnold, defensive back from Tallahassee, Florida. He tweets out, the NIL don't help you if you ain't producing. So that's some strong words coming here from Terry on Arnold. And then Malachi Moore even came out with saying, you know, let's keep the main thing the main thing. And that's the guy in Malachi Moore, one of the young leaders of this defense that is expecting to have a monster season as a sophomore in the coming fall. So as, you know, as we're processing this, as we're processing this very healthy conversation going on here at the Alabama football program with you know, the guys that are going all in, pursuing the name, image, likeness, getting that compensation, and the guys that, though they're happy about the NIL, they don't want this becoming a distraction from the main product, the main purpose, and that's you know trying to win a national championship, that's trying to get to the next level of the NFL, that's trying to be you know, best player here on the field, and just going back to what Malachi Moore said, let's keep the main thing the main thing. So let's, let's dive into that. So the main thing for Alabama, right, is trying to repeat as national champions for the first time since the 2011-2012 you know, seasons. Uh, and another thing that's the main thing, when you look at the Alabama defense here, it's trying to be the best group of the Nick Saban era. Nick Saban has coached some outstanding defenses. We've seen them. But some of the national media personalities actually look at this year's group and they believe, hey, this year's group could be the best group ever of the Nick Saban tenure for the Crimson Tide. And the main thing for this defense is trying to become that dominant, dominant, nasty group. Offensively, the main thing is, although, you know, you, you lost Steve Sarkeesian to Texas, Although you lost a lot of your marquee leadership to the NFL, the main thing is taking Bill O'Brien and taking the pieces you have, Bryce Young, John Metchie, among others, and having this offense be very explosive and having this offense be very dominant and having this offense have the capability to make big-time plays out there on the field. So that's just letting the main thing be the main thing. But, but I just thought it's very intriguing. It's very interesting. It's a very healthy conversation, Ark, because on the day you got name, image, likeness, you got half the folks 
jumping up and down, acting a monkey. You got the other half going, hold on, hold on, hold on. And let's keep the main focus here on the uh, important factors that matter here. Now, of course, SEC Media Days people coming up here in the next couple of weeks, and uh, I know name, image, likeness will not be the main question or the only question, but rest assured it will be a big topic here for every coach that will take that podium. It'll be, a, it'll be a huge topic for Coach Saban. A lot of people will ask, you know, Coach Saban, how are you going to handle this? How are you going to deal with this? You know, Coach, will this become a distraction? Will this become something negative? Will this become something where the players will not have their focus on the play, on the game at hand, and on the idea at hand? I'm pretty sure Nick Saban will come up with, you know, viable answers for everything that's going to be thrown here. You know, at him, but I just think it's interesting. I just think it's intriguing. This is a conversation that will not go away, that won't go away, but I feel like it's healthy. It's a good dialogue to have in getting different perspectives to bring to the table. So kudos to the Alabama players that are, that are actively pursuing you know, the name, image, likeness, getting that compensation, getting those partnerships, but also kudos to the ones that are having their focus on the big bang the NFL bag and just trying to make sure that this does not become a distraction from the main thing which is trying to pursue a national championship and pursue a career in the National Football League. But folks, we take our first break here on the show. Don't touch that dial. We're just getting started. Upon our return, we take your phone calls, your thoughts, your tweets, your texts, your chats, your interactions right after this. You're watching In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith, brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace today by visiting weownthefourthquarter.com. Throw them foes up. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care in support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Remember the taste of Grandma's delicious sweets? Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes brings back those precious memories with just one bite. Each cake made from scratch. They make the perfect dessert to share with family and friends for any occasion, and ordering is easy. Visit Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Click the online store and shop. Then pick up your fresh cake at the kitchen in downtown Homewood. Order yours online at Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes.com. Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes, making memories from scratch. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. Hopping back in, hopping back into the conversation from the break on Friday, TGIF edition of the show. Fourth of July weekend, in my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Happy to see you guys in here. We got some super chats to get to, and we start off with the horn here, John. Jimmy Cashman Clay, that $50 donation. Starting us off here on the show, behind Jimmy Clay. We got Roll Tide and Rise Up one time. That $25 donation come from him, and then we got the man, Mechanic. Mechanic slides in here smoothly with that $25 donation on his end. So that daily super chat goal of $75 has been met by Jimmy Clay. Roll Tide, Rise Up, and Mechanic appreciating those three and everybody helping us out here on the show. But we're back in from the break to take your calls. Call segment brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang. 205-448-1358. That's the number to call in to let your voice be heard on the show. 205-448-1358. We grab a call right now. You're live on the show. What's going on? Hey, Steven. It's Corey from Trustful. How are you doing this Corey. afternoon? Corey, my man. What's going on? How you feeling? I'm doing great. I have a recruiting question for you. Um, these three players have my interest. Uh, Jeremiah Alexander from Thompson, Justice Finkley from here at Trustful, and Omari Kelly from here at Trustful. And 
th- those three players have seen where it seems like jo- um, Jeremiah Alexander is seeming like Clemson, you have to beat out Clemson. Justice Finkley, I've seen him crystal ball to, to Michigan. And Omari Kelly is saying that, that Georgia is the team that set the bar as far as um, his his expectations. The, the thing I'm, I'm wondering is the, the in-state recruiting is why do you think that's kind of a not going our way right now with those three players? Good question there, Corey. Um, when I look at Jeremiah Alexander, I know Alabama is really pushing for him. I know Bama really wants him. I know Bama has been targeting Justice Finkley also. Now, talking with our own Justin Smith, the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA, it's kind of weird where Justice Finkley is because – Bama is targeting him, but I'm not sure if he's a top priority on the board. Definitely something that I will get back with Justin with. And then the Kelly kid is an interesting one, you know, as well. And, of course, I remember also – Oh, T.J. Dutley, the linebacker from Montgomery, uh, Mario Cristobal has just swooped in and got him to commit to Oregon. So it, it, it's 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 a weird dynamic seeing how, you know, 2022 and 2023, you've got a lot of these talented in-state kids. Hopefully, you know, Bama can reach out there and grab, you know, more of these guys. But as of right now, Corey, I look at Jeremiah Alexander. That's the big one. But Alabama's trying to still push and be in the spotlight for. But we will see as this we will see as it keeps going. But Corey, we appreciate that call. That was Corey calling in from Trustville with a recruiting question. It's 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 weird, man. It's weird sometimes when you look at. It. There are so many in-state kids. 2022 has a lot of them. 2023 has a lot of in-state talent, and and you want to get all of those guys. And it's just to me, I feel like sometimes you ask yourself. Are the is the assistant coach that's recruiting this area? Is he saying the right things? Is he doing the right things? Is he, you know, uh, you know, marketing the Alabama program and presenting the Alabama program in the right way? I mean, who knows? But it is what it is. Hopefully, we can get more of you know, these in-state kids here as we continue on the recruiting trail. But appreciate that call from Corey. Quick topic here as you guys are continuing to get your thoughts in on the show, 205-448-1358. Uh, according to the SEC Network here, it's that time of the year again. SEC Network takeover. It happens every year in July. It's been happening the last you know, six years. This year will be the seventh year. And this, and this is... You know, all 14 institutions within the, within the conference, they have a dedicated day to take over all the programming on the SEC network. So tomorrow, Saturday, Bama takes over the network. Bama will have all the programming. So you'll get a chance to relive the 2021 SEC Gymnastics Championship of the Crimson Tide. Dana Duckworth winning that one. You will also get a chance to relive the 2021 College Football Playoff National Championship game between the Crimson Tide and Ohio State, among other things. So if you haven't set your D, if you haven't set your DVR yet when it comes down to Alabama taking over the SEC network. That will be on tomorrow. But And talking more about just name, image, likeness. I mean, once again, you know, yesterday was opening day. This will continue. This will continue to this will continue to, to transpire and take shape. We could see, you know, more Alabama players hop in there to uh, you know get their likeness, to, to compensate off their likeness, compensate off their names, compensate, compensate off their image. I think my opinion with all of this is, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a strong thing. My thing is, as long as it doesn't cause any type of animosity in the locker room. But that's my thing, because we all kind of know the popular players, the popular positions, the quarterbacks, the receivers, the defensive backs, you know, all the sexy positions, they're going to get more of the brands, right? They're going to get more of the marquee partnerships. And uh, I feel like, you know, the offensive line and the defensive line, you know, other spots, they're going to kind of have to scrap and claw for some things, especially if their name uh, is not really up there already. Now, luckily for guys like Evan Neal, He's already got a big name, so it's not going to be a it's not going to be a big uh, you know problem for him 
to get his you know, compensation because his name's already pretty big. But for, for other guys, you no know, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, kickers, punters, that type of position, they're going to have to really fight, scrap, and claw uh, to capitalize off this deal. And um, it's kind of crazy. You know, you go in the locker room and you see, you know, Bryce Young with six, seven, eight, nine partnerships, and, <laughs> you know, another player with six, seven, eight, nine partnerships, and another player, you know, kind of doing the same thing. And you look at, you know, you may be an offensive or defensive lineman, and you're like, you know, where's my money at? You know, where's my opportunity? Where's, where, where, where's my cut of the pie? You know, that, 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 that can maybe start some tension. That can maybe start some stuff. But hopefully, no animosity in the locker room. Got to shout out Jimmy Cash Clay again. <laughs> That's 1776. And the Super Chats appreciate the love there coming from one Jimmy Clay. But, folks, we're going to go to a quick, we're going to go to a break right now here on the show. Don't touch that dial. Upon our return, we get to our two uh, outstanding guests, Rudy Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman, and Matt Cadell, former Alabama wide receiver, but talk more of his name, image, likeness right after this. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up, but now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. We are back in here, folks, back into the action from the break of a number one ticket here for Crimson Tide Football News on a Friday, TGIF edition of the show, 4th of July weekend. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. But we got two heavy hitters coming on here right now as we go to the In My Own Words hotline. And the first one we bring in, former Alabama defensive lineman and the defensive line coach for the powerhouse, Lowndes High School out of Georgia, my man Rudy Griffin. Coach Rudy, what's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Glad, man. Glad to be back, man. Back on with you guys. Absolutely. We got Coach Rudy Griffin here on the line right now, former Alabama defensive lineman. So, of course, Co of course, Rudy, you, you saw it yesterday, opening day, you know, name, image, likeness, NCAA Allowing these college all these college athletes to capitalize on their likeness, getting the, the, these partnerships here. Upon you first seeing this, like what was your initial reaction? Because if this was happening when you when you were playing, you would be jumping off the wall. But what was your initial sure. reaction upon seeing this? Man, I, I, man, honestly, man, I, I thought it was long overdue. And uh, you know, and I'm I'm happy for the guys, man. And, and uh, that was kind of my my initial response was like, man. Well, uh, well, let me let me back up. My my first initial response was like, dang, why didn't it happen when I was <laughs> when I was playing? It's a little it's a little too you know it's a little too late. But and then my second response was, man, I'm happy for the guys, man. It was long overdue. Absolutely. So, Coach Griffin, I mean, so. One of the main fears that Alabama fans have about this and college football fans in general is, will this take away from the quality of the sport? Will this take away from the quality of the game, especially where Alabama football is concerned? People look at, well, you know, when they were not getting paid, we saw the athletes have more determination, more discipline, more stick more stick to itiveness. They really worked for it. They really went hard after it. But now with the name, image, likeness and having this compensation, do you feel like the quality of Alabama football is going to dip, is going to go down, or do you not feel like that? Yeah, absolutely not, man. The quality ain't gonna go nowhere. You know, and I think I think folks gotta pump the brakes on it, you know, and, and just realize that it's not every single player in college football is gonna be making a whole heck of a lot of money. You know, it's only going to be a select few 
uh, that's going to actually get a chance to to, to rack in a, a little bit. And uh, and at the end of the day, man, for in order for you to get sponsorships and, and endorsement deals, I man, your play got to speak for yourself on the field. So I mean, it's not like you just just because you sign to play at University of Alabama, you're going to be guaranteed to get endorsement deals. And so your motivation factor should be still the same. So listen, if I want to get if I want to get endorsement deals, I want to get partnerships. My play got to speak for myself. So you still got to go out there and make plays. I mean, you can't be a bench rider and, and signing deals. Got Rudy Griffin right here on the phone lines, folks, if you're just tuning into the show. In my own words, on a Friday, Coach Griffin, former Alabama defensive lineman and the defensive line coach for the Powerhouse Lounge High School out of Georgia. So, Rudy, just looking at Nick Saban, I, I feel like one of the most underrated qualities of Coach Saban is the teacher that he is, is being able to explain, is being able to direct, is being able to help people understand the ins and outs of the game, uh, not just on the field, but off the field and in life in general. And he normally finds a way to take these things and make them be teachable moments for the program. He makes the program better with these moments. And, and he finds a way to kind of not allow this to be a huge distraction. So j j j just in your mind, how do you see Coach Saban taking this name, image, likeness and using it more so at, at, as a teachable moment for the players across the board. Man, I, I think as an Alabama fan, you know, I, I would be fired up, man, because I think this added extra life and extra years to save him. You know, he was, you know, of course, I didn't hear him say it personally, but, you know, he, he I, I can see him getting bored of, of doing what he was doing, man. I mean, he was dominant, you know, in, the, in college football, you know, same old, same old. You know, now you got something that's added, I think, give him a little spark. And uh, I think he's going to see some of the, you know, the best coaching Saban's done in years, man. And, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan and, of course, a former player, and I'm fired up because I know right now that just gave him an extra breath of life because, you know, I, one thing we know about Saban is he, he's going he's gonna to make sure those guys are going to understand the process and the most important about is the team and winning football games and playing for each other. So uh, that's nothing you don't have to worry about. But I'm fired up because I know that just gave Coach Saban an extra breath of life. Absolutely. He's Rudy Griffin, ladies and gentlemen, former Alabama defensive lineman and uh, defensive line coach at the Powerhouse Lounge High School in George. Just coming on here with us to give his thoughts, how he feels about the name, image, likeness going forward here for collegiate athletes, especially at Alabama. Coach Griffin, appreciate you coming on, my man. As always, you be blessed. Take care of yourself. Be good. Enjoy your 4th of July weekend, brother. Oh, man, you too, man. Hey, don't eat too much barbecue, boss. I'm going to try to, Rudy. I'm going to try to, but I'm not going to make no promises, bro. I'm not going to make no promises. But that's, that's, that's Rudy Griffin, folks. Former Alabama defensive lineman Rudy Griffin graciously joined us here on the show talking about name, image, likeness. And we go from one former player to another former player, uh, former Alabama wide receiver Matt Cadell, who played from 2003 to 07, the one year with Coach Saban, the 2007 season. Matt, my man, what's going on, brother? I'm excited to be here. I'm glad to be back on the show with you and uh, talking Alabama football with you. Absolutely. Got Matt Cadell here on the phone lines right now. So, Matt, the same thing asking, you know, Coach Rudy Griffin here earlier. Just, you know, your initial reaction to yesterday was the first day, you know, the NCAA finally allowing these student athletes to uh, capitalize, get compensation, get partnerships off their, off their likeness. What was your initial reaction, you know, upon seeing this? You know, initially for me, I was excited for the players. Um, you know, we didn't have that when I was playing ball, but you know, I'm happy for these younger guys. They get the opportunity to take advantage of their them performing at a high level on the collegiate level, and they get to make some money and have some savings and have some spending uh, capital for them to, you know, be successful on down the road. So I think this is an outstanding opportunity for collegiate athletes playing football in the SEC. And I believe Coach Saban, being the leader that he is, um, he's going to make sure those student athletes are taught and educated on how to save money, how to spend money, how to maximize your spending potential, how to maximize your saving potential. And I think it's going to be a great asset for head coach Nick Saban and Alabama football athletic program. Now, keeping this just solely here on the Crimson Tide here, Matt, because uh, 
you know, and talk with talk with Rudy Griffin here. One of the main things that he kind of discussed was uh, it's it's not going to be everybody getting you know a partnership. It's not going to be everybody getting that compensation. Only these select few, especially if your play on the field speaks to that. So just off that notion, do you feel like this could lead to maybe animosity, to maybe friction in the locker room, especially if you look at you know Bryce Young? Maybe he gets eight, nine partnerships and, and, and other big ni- big name guys uh, get more partnerships than others. Do you see this being some confusion, some frustration, some friction in the locker room? Or do you feel like, you know, the team will will roll as is despite, you know, just the selected few getting the, the, uh, the name image likeness, get, being able to capitalize off that? Um, no, I do not stand at it seeing it as being a distraction. I feel like for the players, the most important thing is playing at a high level, maximizing every opportunity and being dominant on and off the field in the classroom as well as on the field. And I feel like Coach Saban is going to, if all, I think Coach Saban is going to bring in guys. He has guys on the team now that are all about football, prioritizing being the best football player, academic student, as well as athletic student. And I think when you have a team, a locker room with those type of guys, coaches, support staff, athletic trainers, they're all in it, the same goal, to win the championship. And I think those guys are just going to be focused on their performance, their craftsmanship, and improving, getting better each and every day. That way they can dominate the talent. And I think Coach Saban is going to use this as a great asset to advance the program and enhance the program where they can get that much closer to their goals. If you're just tuning into the show, ladies and gentlemen, we now have former Alabama wide receiver Matt Cadell on the line here, played from 2003 to 07, that 2007 season, the first year under Nick Saban for the Crimson Tide. So, Matt, now just going strategically here to Coach Saban, I feel like one of the more undervalued traits of his tenure is the teacher that he is, is the explainer that he is. He's somebody that can take, you know, every nook, every bolt, every cranny, and really bring to life what needs to be brought to life in terms of the players. And he has just a great understanding on how to not allow certain things to become a distraction. He always says, be where your feet are, focus on the main thing, uh, play with passion, but don't be over-emotional. He kind of has a phrase or a statement for everything to not allow distractions get in the way. So just just in your mind, how and what ways do you see Nick Saban making sure this is not a bothersome, this is not a distraction, Alabama is still going to remain Alabama even though the NIL is in play now? Well, it is the head coach, Nick Saban. He's one of the greatest leaders in all of the world, internationally, and not just locally, not just statewide, but in the Southeast, Southeastern Conference. So I think he's going to use this as a great opportunity to teach his players, educate them on all the ins and outs, nooks and crannies regarding, you know, having a lot of money, you know, having that, all this cash inflow for you. And I think he's going to use it as an opportunity to teach these kids and help propel them for the future of their life. So when they graduate school, they have a degree, maybe they have two degrees, they're more prepared with having this education, Coach Saban's teaching, to be successful in their later years, in their future career. But I think right now Coach Saban's going to use it as a resource and a tool to improve his team, improve his players. I think he's got the right guys to move forward and have that type of dominance in the SEC and have those teaching schools and tools for his players and his team. He's Matt Cadell, ladies and gentlemen, former Alabama wide receiver, played from 2003 to 07. Join us here on the show but talk a little bit about that name, image, likeness, where Bama is concerned, giving his thoughts on that. Matt, as always, man, appreciate you coming on, helping us out here with your insight and expertise on the show. Take care of yourself, man. Be good. Enjoy your fourth. Don't eat too much. You don't have to make me any promises, but have a good fourth, man. All right, you have a great 4th of July weekend as well, and I wish all the Bama fans, the Bama friends, and the Bama nation a roll tide. Have a great weekend. Absolutely. Matt Cadell joining us right here on the show along with uh, Rudy Griffin talking about that name, image, likeness where Bama is concerned. We're going to go to a break right now. People, don't touch that down because when we get back, we return to the phone lines to get your interactions, take your calls, your thoughts, your opinions on all things Crimson Tide right after this. 
Don't touch that dial. Call in right now as we're taking your calls up next on In My Own Words with Stephen M. Smith. Brought to you by We Own the Fourth Quarter. Visit weownthefourthquarter.com now to get your four-finger bling necklace. You know what we do at the start of the fourth quarter. We throw them foes up. But now you don't have to wait until the fourth quarter. Get your four-finger bling necklace at weownthefourthquarter.com. It's the first and only logo that captures the essence of all Crimson Tide players and fans as we represent the legendary Alabama football fourth quarter dominance. Get your four-finger bling necklace right now at weownthefourthquarter.com. Get yours today and stun on them haters. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Right, folks, and we are back in from the break of the number one forum for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine on a Friday. I appreciate everybody for checking out the show on today. And uh, as all, and before we get into, before we uh, actually get into that that call, I have to take your calls. Call statement brought to you by the Blue Wrench Gang, 205-448-1358. One more time, 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you. Be sure to also like the show up. Give us a thumbs up here on the show. Hit that like button on the YouTube channel, making us your platform here for all Bama football conversations. But as you're getting your thoughts together to call in, quick, cool topic right here. So Jalen Hurts, Last week, Jalen Hurts had his football camp, youth football camp, at the Hoover Met Fields. And prior to the camp, he got a chance to have an interview. I think he had the interview with Rick Carley of WTVM, if I'm not mistaken, Channel 13. And um, one of the questions directed to Hurts was about, you know, Mac Jones and the season that Mac Jones had this past year for the Crimson Tide. 4,500 passing yards, 41 touchdowns, set the college football record for a completion percentage 77.4. Did a lot of great things in this one year as the starting quarterback for the Crimson Top. And, and Hurts talked about it. You know, Mac had a very unique opportunity. He came in, you know, needing to be patient, having to be patient. He was able to sit behind Jalen and Tua and, and learn things and pick up things and, and grow in areas. And, of, and according to Hertz, when when, uh, when Max time came, uh, he took off with it. He took off with it. He ran with it. And, you know, he dominated it. And, he, and his patience paid off. And, you know, Jalen said he knew that Max's patience would pay off. And he's proud that Max's patience has paid off. And he feels like that's one of the areas – in Jones's game that's going to really help him as he enters his rookie season coming up for the New England Patriots. Now, Jones will have uh, to, Jones is going to be battling Cam Newton in training camp coming up here late this month for the opportunity to be QB1 for New England, but you know, he's already gaining that respect from Bill O'Brien, Josh McDaniels as the offensive coordinator, and the teammates around him. You know, the guys are saying Max got that swag that I never thought he had. Max got that leadership. He's got that confidence. You know, offensive lineman Trent Brown said you can't refer to Mac as a young guy. He's got that, that veteran look about himself. He's got that veteran work ethic. That, that veteran mindset about himself. So really cool here just seeing how Jalen was able to have you know, a conversation talking about Mac Jones and him going from being the guy that had to wait his turn, uh, be patient, wanting to be developed and needed to be developed into, you know, when his moment came and filling in for Tua in 2019 and, and injured Tua at that, getting those opportunities, and then going from that to, of course, you know, him having the single season that he had this past year, it was really, really special there uh, for Max. So really cool they're seeing Jalen Hurts talk about his former team and looking forward to seeing what he does in the professional game. But we go to a break right now here, folks, on the show. Don't touch that dial. When we get back, we got the famous lock or drop 
game in terms of this year's Crimson Tide team. You don't want to miss it. We tidy up loose ends with lock or drop right after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the All Bama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your All Bama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $7.95 per month or pay $74.95 for a full year subscription. That's a yearly saving of $20. Go to touchdownalabama.com today and roll tide. Thank you for tuning in. Show your support right now by clicking that like button. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button now and enable all notifications to make sure you don't ever miss any of the best Alabama football news, notes, and information right here on Touchdown Alabama. As we're back in here, folks, from the break on a Friday, how to show on the streets, number one forum for Bama football news. In my own words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate everybody for checking out the show. The reason why I'm chuckling here is I was looking in the chat line, and one of you guys wrote in, I just got a partnership. I just signed my NIL with Emily's, Heir with Emily's Heirloom Pound Cakes. <laughs> Man, we even got you, the fans, saying that y'all have signed y'all NIL with Emily's heirloom pound cake. So that's uh, that's awesome right there. If I if, if, if I if I still had some eligibility left, I don't know where my partnership would come from. I don't know who I would go to for that partnership. But hey, it is what it is. However, uh, before we get to the final topic of conversation, got to remind you of TDAware.com. That is TDAware.com. So for all of you fans still overjoyed with the Crimson Tides National Championship, we want you to check out our Championship Collection merch. Now, this means you grab you an 18 of them things, folk hoodie, T-shirt or sweatshirt, as well as our Got 18 We Do shirts. Designs that feature all 18 championship years on the back. You head on over to TDAware.com. Do it right now. Don't waste time. Do it right now. TDAware.com. You go over to Championship Collections merch tab, and you get you, those, you get you that gear today. Show them that support for Coach Saban, the University of Alabama, the student athletes, and us here at TDA. But... We have, we, we've been trying to have more interactive, fun game segments for you guys. And uh, we've, got, we, we, we've got you with the locker drop. We got you with the buy or sell, buy, sell, or hold. We're trying to get more in here. But I felt like today, in honor of Crimson Tide football for, for this upcoming season, we go to that famous locker drop game right now. This six-pack of questions on 4th of July weekend so we're gonna start this off right here with our first off with our first question and that being jace mcclellan jace mcclellan running running back jace mcclellan will be the number one back for the crimson tie he'll be running back one now we're, we're in a modern day a modern age of college football and in the, in the nfl where the running backs have to do everything you got to be able to run with power in between the tackles you got to have speed in the open field when you're running you got to be able to enhance the passing game, catching the ball out the backfield. you got to be able to pass block. you got to do so many things well offensively. And when I look at Chase McClellan being running back one, I'm going to say lock this all the way in. Love Chase. He's been working with Brad Lester this entire offseason, this entire summer. Brad Lester spoke on Chase McClellan is even more explosive than what Najee Harris is, what Najee Harris was. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be so exciting. Locking that in there for Jace McClellan. As we move on here to the second question for Locker Drop, this goes to one Slade Bolden. Slade Bolden, Slade Breezy, Slade Cat, 
will have five touchdown receptions in the upcoming season. Now, believe it or not, Slay Bolden is still holding on to that starting position in the slot as good as, you know, the Christian Learys are, you know, JoJo Earl coming in here. So far, Slay Bolden still holding on to that starting position in the slot. And he stepped up this past season. You know, stepped up against Tennessee, stepped up against Arkansas, stepped up against Florida, stepped up against Notre Dame, stepped up against Ohio State. He stepped up down the stretch of this past season. 24 catches, 270 yards, one touchdown, trying to go from being a gadget guy to a marquee receiver. He's had a strong summer, had a really good spring, six catches for 52 yards, but will Slay Bowden catch at least five touchdowns this season? Lock this in. Slade Breezy will get five touchdowns. He'll get at least five. He will have at least five. We move on down here to the next here question in the locker drop game. We've got here Alabama's offense will average 50 points per game. And this is just, this is, this is, this is a tall task. This is a big feat here, especially losing Steve Sarkeesian to Texas and all that he did in the previous season. You know, 48 and a half points per game, Alabama average, producing three. You no know, Heisman finalist, a Heisman winner in Devontae Smith. Mac Jones, Najee Harris winning a, winning a bunch of awards. Offensive line was big time. Steve Sarkeesian did his thing. And though you lost him and you lose, you know, the other you know, big main players to the NFL, you've got a Bill O'Brien. You got a Bryce Young. You got some pieces back. You got some guys that can work with them, that can do what they do. But will this Alabama offense average 50 points a game? We're going to drop this one. We are going to drop out on this one. Don't see it happening. I think this offense will get between you no know, 40 and 42 points per game. Don't quite see 50, though, in the first year. I think it takes a small step back here under Billy O'Brien in his first year. But moving on down here, next thought in the locker drop, we got my man Christian Harris, C-Money Harris. Christian Harris will win the Dick Butkus Award this season. I'm going to say this right now. So, Christian Harris is playing with fire, anger, passion, energy. And the reason why is because he had a productive year last year. 79 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, a lot of quarterback hurries. Had the huge interception against Notre Dame, college football playoff semifinal, you know, in, in that matchup right there. Had the huge sack against Florida in the SEC championship game to seal the deal there. But despite the success Christian Harris had, he was left off the All-SEC team to end the season last year. So you know this brother mad. You know this brother mean. You know this brother dangerously hungry to get every single award he can get his hands on. But the question is, will Christian Harris win the Buckets Award Lock that in, baby. Lock that in. Money in the bank. Dylan Moses didn't get it. Christian Harris is going to make sure he walk out of here with that thing because he knows I walk out of here with this thing. Got a chance to be high first-round draft pick. So Christian Harris there. Moving on down to the next thought here in locker drop. Alabama's defense will force 25 interceptions in the upcoming season. This one's tough because uh, the most interceptions – but Alabama has forced in the Saban era was 24, going back to 2009. And this year's defense, tough. This year's defense, capable. This year's defense, trying to be that elite, hungry, masterful, nasty, dominant, elite group. But do I see it getting 25 picks? I drop this one. Don't see it getting 25 picks. Have it getting between, uh, I have it getting between 15 and 20. Not 25, but between 15 and 20, I have it right there. If I had to get, if I if I had to give a, a, a like a mean number, 17, I would have it 17 picks for the upcoming season. But don't see it getting 25. So as we move on down here to the last one here in the locker drop, six pack of questions here. Alabama will have a Heisman Trophy winner for the second straight season. We were so happy to see Devontae Smith get that Heisman. I mean, it was such a, a great joy to see Smitty 
Bucknell snagged that thing, being the first wide receiver in Alabama history to win the Heisman, being the third player of the Nick Saban era to win the Heisman. It was a masterful job on his end, getting over 1,800 receiving yards, 23 touchdown receptions. He did his thing. But will Alabama have a second person? Will Alabama have a back-to-back, -back, you know, second straight Heisman winner? Dropping this also. It's going to be tough. Dropping this one also. Don't see this one. It, 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 it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But at the same time, what have you as Alabama fans, what have you guys have always said? We would much rather see a national championship than a Heisman Trophy. If you get the Heisman Trophy, hey, that's great. That's awesome. That's fantastic. But even if you don't get the Heisman, as long as Alabama's carrying home the national championship, that's the main thing that you as fans have always talked about that you want more so than the Heisman Trophy. But that right there, folks, lock or drop game. That was fun. Six pack of questions there for your Alabama Crimson Tide for the upcoming season here in the fall. But as always, Tide Nation, you want the best in news, notes, and coverage on your favorite program, that being Alabama football. You can get this by accessing the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You can download the app from the iPhone App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store, if you got the Android phone. For your audio listening needs, we got you covered here. iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, or iHeartRadio. Got you covered right there. Got some Super chest to get to right now. Jimmy Cash Clay. That ten dollar donation. Helping us out on the show. We got Randy Harris with a ten dollar donation. Helping us out. And big William Bryan WB. And I ain't talking about Warner Brothers. I'm talking about William Bryan. That $49.99. Helping us out right there in the super chats. Appreciate all of you guys showing us the love here on the show. Really, really thankful here for you guys. As always, Tide Nation, you can purchase individual copies of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Have those sent to your door. That link will be found in the description. If you're also trying to get that print copy, that fresh copy, that new copy of Touchdown Alabama Magazine, you go to touchdownalabama.com. You click join, become a member, a subscriber today. That link in the description. And if you're also trying to get your hands on that four finger bling neck and this four finger bling jewelry, courtesy of our guys at we own the fourth quarter.com. That's we own the fourth quarter.com. That link is in the description as well. But until next time, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives appreciate value. Those husbands, children, the weekend's here. Fourth of July weekend in the building. Continue to do the right thing, the fun thing, the smart thing, the good thing, the legitimate thing to not be bored. You get you those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. You protect yourself, protect the loved ones around you. Enjoy the 4th of July weekend. Have fun with family and friends. And until next time, so long, everybody. It's been in my own words.